This is a quick unboxing and first look at this Aperture Amaran LED light. It's a model number AL528W. They do a couple of other versions as well. The W here standing for wide. Um, it's a sort of wide beam from the LEDs. They also do an S version, which is more of a spot version, and a, a C version, which is by color. This version you have to gel if you want to change the color temperature by default. It's um, daylight, apparently. Now, I know there are a lot of reviews of this particular unit already around on YouTube, uh, but I happened to be browsing Amazon the other day, which is always a dangerous thing to do, and I stumbled across this light. Costs, I think, £100, £102, something like that on Amazon UK, and I just thought I'd give it a go, see what it was like. And since I bought it, I might as well do a video about it as well. Comes in that rather nice box, it also comes in this rather nice case. Two sections to the case, the back section which has the light itself and this front section which has some accessories in it. So let's look at that first. There's a power brick here, if I can get that out, uh, with a normal sort of kettle style three prong lead there and a rather peculiar three prong DC lead out the other side. I don't know what technically the name for that type of connection is but it's not one I've seen before. Also included in the kit is, there you go, standard UK mains lead with the three prong connection on the end there. There's an adapter to go on the top of a standard light stand. That goes on the light stand like that. And then this screws into the um, aperture LED light and then it's tiltable by unscrewing that, moving that around so you can angle the light however you want it. Pop that over there for the moment. And then finally, this appears to be a carry case for this whole case, a carry strap, I should say, rather, for the case. I'll put that over there as well, fasten that up. Then in the main section of the bag at the back here, where's the zip gone? There we go. Unscrew that and open it up. There's a few bits of you know user manual, instruction manual, and so on and such like. Um, here on this side we've got the, the gel I mentioned, that's a orange gel obviously to take the light down to tungsten uh, temperature. But over here is the actual unit. Let's see if I can get it out. So it's um, it's not very heavy, it's plastic. It's got a screw thread on the bottom and also a screw thread on that side and that side, which again is for screwing that uh, light stand adapter into. It's got a clear um, diffuser on it, which you can only just about get off. There we go. No good reason particularly to take that off, except I suppose to swap it for the orange one. And that just clicks into place. On the back then, um, two slots for batteries. It takes the Sony NPF type of batteries. They are not included, so your £100 simply buys you the light, the bag and the, the gels and the mains adapter. It does not include any actual batteries, but you can pick them up fairly cheaply, uh, at least if you don't buy the actual Sony ones, you can. For example, I bought a couple of generic Sony NPF 970 equivalent batteries, two of them for £35. How long they'll last, how good they are, I have yet to find out. But I think the original Sony ones cost, I think they're over £100 each, so I'll take a chance on two of them for 35 quid. There's the input socket for the DC power in lead. Above that, a simple on off switch. And then over here, a dimmer going down from around 10% up to uh, 100%. There is a readout on here that gives you the percentage brightness that you're currently displaying. Now if I'd bought the AL528C version, that's the colour changeable version, there would be another knob here which would allow you to adjust the colour temperature of the light. And the way they work is that half the LEDs are daylight balanced, half the LEDs are tungsten balanced, and as you change the temperature it simply switches the amount of brightness to each bank of LEDs. The downside of buying the C version, the, the colour switchable one, is that at full brightness only half the LEDs are on because it's the either the daylight balance set or the tungsten balance set. So it'll only be about half as bright as this one. I would rather have daylight balanced personally and then if I need to gel it down to tungsten, do that. So let's just grab these batteries which I charged up earlier and they clip on fairly straightforwardly. 
Let's uh, turn it down to minimum and switch it on. And I hope you can see on the back there, that's now giving us an indication of the um, state of charge of the batteries. Four little green lights telling us they're fully charged and a 10 telling us the light is currently putting out 10% of its power. So as I turn that up to maximum, there's 99%. Doesn't actually go to 100, goes to 99. Uh, so the question with these units usually is, how bright are they actually in practice? What is the spread of the light like? Is it an even spread or does it have little hot spots? And sometimes on these LEDs, in particular this model, I know a lot of people have moaned about this on the internet, certainly the early versions of this, appeared to have a flicker when filmed. You could see a sort of visual flickering um, on the recording. So we'll take this away and do some little tests and see what it's actually like in practice. Well, the first test is simply whether the light is bright enough to compensate for a subject, in this case me, who is in a position where if it wasn't for the light, they would be silhouetted by the light behind them. You can see I've got a window behind me, daylight streaming in, and if I didn't have the aperture light shining at me now, um, I would be silhouetted, or we'd have to turn up the camera's exposure so much to get my face correctly exposed that the background would be completely burnt out. As it is, I've got the aperture light on 99%. It's about three feet away from me, just up there. And my face is correctly exposed at around 70%. And we can pretty much make out the background behind me. So I would say the aperture light is, is doing a decent enough job. I would like it to be a little bit brighter still because I've got to have it at maximum to get the exposure the way it is now. I would like to have a little bit of extra flexibility, a little bit more brightness wouldn't go amiss, but it's okay, it's not bad. Well now the subject of this next test might seem a little peculiar because it is just a blank wall, but the reason for this is to test whether the light does in fact flicker when filming. I've got the light at 99% at the moment, it's about four feet away from the wall, and I'm just going to turn the light intensity down and then back up again and we'll see whether at any point we get this flickering effect that has been reported by other users of the light. So currently at 99% that's 90, 80, 70, 60, 50, 40, 30, 20, and down to minimum brightness, which is 10%. Now I saw a few little flickers as I was adjusting it, but I think that was while I was adjusting the light rather than the light actually continuously flickering. So I'm going to bring it back up again. Now let's go from 10 up to um, 20, and up again to 30, and I'm just gonna keep bringing it brighter and brighter and brighter not seeing any flickering on the recording on the camcorder screen but if there is any it might show up i suppose later when i look at the files in the edit but as far as i can tell the light is not causing any flicker and for the record i have this on a shutter speed of 1 50th that's because i'm shooting 50 frames a second and 1 50th is about right for that so there we are at 100 percent again and all seems well Right, okay, I know this is an extreme close-up and it's not for vanity, honestly, and I apologise for putting my ugly mug so big on your screen, but the point of this test is to see what the quality of the light is like. The uh, aperture light's about, again, three feet away from me up there. I'm being lit solely by that light and I have white balanced the camera to it. And the trouble with some of these cheap LEDs is that they have a magenta or a green cast sometimes so that when you look at a person the light can make them look just a little bit unhealthy sometimes even when you've white balanced and set everything up correctly just that little spike in the spectrum of the light can make your subject look unhealthy now i should tell you now i feel perfectly healthy the question is does the light on my skin tones make me look a little greeny a little unhealthy a little unwell and that's why I've got it in so close, so we can see what the sort of quality of the light is on a typical Caucasian skin tone. And I won't do any sort of correction on this in the edit. It will be presented exactly as is. We have to allow for compression 
after the edit and through YouTube, of course. But even that notwithstanding, do I look healthy or not? That is the question. Is there a green cast in the light or a magenta one or any other colour for that matter? Now for a more technical analysis of the colour spectrum, here's the vector scope reading from when the camera was pointing at the white wall, and it is pretty much exactly what you'd expect. All the colours, red, green, blue and so on, equally represented because we were looking at something white, hence you just get that single compact dot in the centre of the screen. Now in order to look at that more closely, I increased the saturation by 300%, and had a look at it as I varied the intensity of the light. And you can see, first of all, that at 100% there is a very, very slight bias of the colour spectrum over towards the yellow side, and that as the light dims, it shifts very gently back towards the blue side. It is only a fractional shift, and I certainly couldn't actually see it on my screen, and of course I have brought it up here by 300%. So I don't think it's anything to worry about, and I, for one, am happy with the colour spectrum of this light. Now let's just do the flickering test again with the light running off its batteries. The previous test, it was running off the mains. Now it's on the two uh, NPF type batteries solely. So here we are at 99%, and let's gradually reduce it and see if we can see any flicker. That's 70%, 30%, 10%, 10%, turn it back up again very gently, not seeing any evidence of flicker on the camcorder's screen. but it may only be visible if it is there, perhaps, when I watch it on the big screen. Coming back up towards maximum, that's 70%. And that's 99% again. So overall, what do I reckon to the Aperture AL528W? Well, it's low cost, lightweight, and reasonably bright, on the downside, it doesn't come with any batteries, it's not quite bright enough, and it doesn't have any barn doors on it for directing the light. I would say it is a reasonable purchase, though it might be better suited as a fill light rather than as a key. Thanks for watching, and if you like the video, why not give me a little thumbs up and perhaps subscribe to the channel? Bye bye!